welcome back friends i hope you're doing well i'm going to share with you how you can choose emulsifiers and solubilizers when you're formulating your hair and skincare products um, this is a question i get asked quite often so i'm going to share as much as i can and hopefully this video will help you in choosing the right emulsifier for your formula um, if this is your first time stopping by my name is esther and I make DIY hair and skincare videos and I also sell my products on my website. If you want to check that out, I'll have that linked in the description box. So let's jump right in. So what is an emulsifier? Emulsifiers are used to combine oil and water together so that way you don't have separation in your finished product. Um, so think about things like your lotions, your creams, um, your shampoos, body washes, face washes, cleansers. Anytime you're combining um, water or water-based ingredients with oil-based ingredients, you are going to need an emulsifier. Um, of course, if you choose not to use an emulsifier, then you're going to have to shake that product, maybe like a shampoo. You're going to have to shake that every time you want to use it because you are going to have separation. So that's why you need an emulsifier. So which emulsifier should you choose? You have options between natural based and synthetic based emulsifiers. So the final choice is entirely up to you. Um, so emulsifiers have um, different charges. So you have uh, an ionic emulsifier that has a negative charge and then you have the non-ionic emulsifier that has a neutral charge and then cationic emulsifier that has a positive charge. So you might ask why is this even important? It's just good for you to know. So whenever you're choosing an emulsifier or you want to buy one, you understand these charges. I'll also leave a link in the description box it's a blog and it's a formulating blog um, i'll leave that linked uh, in the description box if you want to check that out um, but these charges play a role when you're formulating for example you might have a uh, an emulsifier like rita Morse scg that is a anionic um, emulsifier so it may not work well with some cationic ingredients um, which are positive um, charged ingredients. Um, let's say example is maybe BTMS 50. So it's just something to throw out there for you to think about. And at your own time, you can um, just read about these charges and the roles that they play when you're formulating with different ingredients. So here are some examples of anionic emulsifiers. Um, my favorite on this list is Rita Morse SCG. I would say do your research because I know not everyone has access to this, um, the suppliers here in the United States. Um, but these are some examples. And then moving on to non-ionic emulsifiers. There are so many to choose from. Um, the most common one on here is Emulsifying Wax NF. Um, Olivem 1000 and the Montanov emulsifiers. All amazing um, emulsifiers and then we have the cationic emulsifiers the most popular one on here is BTMS 50 which is amazing for hair conditioners um, so just look at the list and see which one you want to formulate with and which one you have access to and then you have the cold emulsifiers these ones do not require any heat um, you just use it straight into your formula so at the end of the day, you can just look through everything and decide which one you want to use. I have uh, my personal favorites. I love Rita Morse SCG. It makes really lovely emulsions. I like Montanov 202. I'm not really a fan of Olivem 1000. It's an amazing emulsifier, but it's a little bit too temperamental for me. But that's just my preference. So I would say do your research and decide uh, for your own uh, formula at the end of the day. What is the usage amount for emulsifiers? This is going to vary. So you want to follow your supplier guidelines and you don't want to exceed the recommended 
oil percent that is recommended by your supplier. Um, so what I mean is if I go to a supplier website like Lotion Crafter, um, so Lotion Crafter, I'll go over to their collections, their collections section, and I'm going to go over to emulsifiers. So I'm going to go over to this emulsifier here, Ecomuls. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Ecomuls is the same um, emulsifier as Rita Mose SCG. So some suppliers have some ingredients under different names. So how do you know? You're going to look at the um, inky name. So the inky name is the international recognized way to identify cosmetic ingredients. So somebody that's in the United Kingdom, if you look up the inky name, it's going to be the same. Um, so very important. So after looking up the inky name, you're going to look at the formulation guide. So the formulation guide is going to help you with using this emulsifier so things to consider you want to look at the ph that they recommend in this case is 5 to 7.5 range this is important because if you're using a preservative you want to make sure your preservative is compatible with this emulsifier and then they you want to pay attention to the oil phase they recommend 25 percent you don't want to go use a uh, oil phase amount of 40%. It's not going to be stable. Your formula is not going to be stable. This emulsifier can only handle up to 25%. And then you want to pay attention to the usage rate, which is about two to 10% is what they recommend. And of course, when you do your testing, your batch testing, um, then you will see what percentage works best in your formula. If you want to use natural compliant emulsifiers, here is my list of natural emulsifiers. As always, please do your research and decide for yourself and decide for your own formula. Um, I haven't used every single emulsifier on this list. I have used Montanov 202, Olive M1000, Rita Mose SCG, um, very soft EQ65 and the sunflower lecithin soy lecithin emulsifiers um, one thing I'll say is um, sunflower and soy lecithin are not sufficient to use in emulsions like creams and lotions um, you can use the sunflower lecithin or soy lecithin in your shampoos um, face washes cleansers serums um, but you cannot use them um, alone for a lotion or cream you are going to need something stronger if you plan on using um, sunflower or soy lecithin um, but all the emul emulsifiers listed they all have amazing properties and qualities um, so once again decide for yourself and see if that works for you in your own formula so moving on to solubilizers they are similar to emulsifiers they still help you blend oil and water together but in this case it helps you blend small amounts of oil in your water-based products so solubilizers are emulsifiers but they help blend small amounts of oil in your water-based products for example um, this solubilizer i'm using here is um, poly sugar mulse d9 so this helps to blend things like essential oils, fragrance oils into the water phase um, in your formula. It helps to blend small amounts of oils too. Um, but I notice if you use a lot of oils, you will have some separation in your finished product. So I would say use small amounts of oil if you're trying to solubilize those oils in your water-based products. So things like your hair mist, hair sprays, body mist, body sprays, um, room sprays, things like that. If you're trying to um, uh, blend in um, things like your fragrance oils, essential oils, then you're going to use a solubilizer. So that's the difference between the emulsifier and solubilizer. It's just in the amount of oils that you're trying to blend into that formula. So here is my list um, of solubilizers. Once again, do your own research and see if this is going to work in your own formula. Um, I know caprylyl, capril glucoside, even though it's a surfactant, 
um, like a cleansing agent it's still able to solubilize um, essential oils fragrance oils into your um, water-based products um, polish sugar mossy d9 is a eco cert natural approved solubilizer you can also use um, the um, polysorbate um, solubilizers as well um, but it all comes down to preference if you're leaning more towards natural um, solubilizers or emulsifiers then just do your own research and see if any of these ingredients will work for you but I hope you found this video helpful I try to put as much information as possible um, as always if you have questions feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer your questions please don't forget to subscribe if you've not um, like this video and don't forget to turn on your notifications so you don't miss any new videos I upload and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!